Hello everyone, my name is Xiangnan. I'm glad to present you one of my work during my PhD study, Segmentation Reconstruction Guided Facial Image D Occlusion. The outline of my talk is as follows. Occlusions are very common in face images in the wild, which harms the face-related computer vision tasks. To address this issue, some task-specific methods are proposed and made great success. A relative more general solution would be de-occluding face images before passing them on to downstream tasks. Some methods can only remove one kind of a face occlusion, such as mask or eyeglasses. Some others can deal with more occlusion types, such as cups, microphones, hands, etc. Existing methods share the same uh, strategy. That is, they synthesize the training data by overlapping the occlusion on face image and then train the model to recover the occluded texture. Unfortunately, there doesn't exist a method that can remove arbitrary type of occlusion. There are two main difficulties. First, the limited occlusion type variety in the training data, and second, the need of occlusion-free ground truth images. Our method solves the above problems. It is robust to arbitrary occlusions, and it doesn't require occlusion-free training data. It is composed of three sub-modules, the face segmentation module, the 3D reconstruction module, and the face imprinting module. The most difficult part is obtaining the occlusion mask, since they are exhaustless so we cannot train a segmentation module that precisely segment out the occlusion. Instead of detecting the occlusion directly, we decide to segment the face part, since we have tens of thousands of face images for training, and then we use the 3D reconstructed silhouette and the face region to subtract out the occluded part. The segmentation module follows the classic UNET structure with ResNet 18 as encoder. The module is guided by dice loads and the binary cross entropy loads with online hard example mining technique. Uh, we train on CLAB A mask HQ, which contains facial attribute segmentation for 30,000 high resolution images. However, the problem of this dataset is that it doesn't contain the occlusions, except the hair and the glasses. So we manually labeled thousands of occlusions from the dataset. And we also collected occlusions that doesn't appear in, uh, in the dataset, for example, the face mask. We used texture patches to substitute the occlusion texture to boost the robustness of the model. Our segmentation model achieves the sort of performance. Here are the qualitative and the quantitative results. Uh, the 3D reconstruction module follows the, uh, the work of accurate uh, 3D reconstruction uh, with uh, weekly supervised learning. Um, as mentioned before, we use the 3D face silhouette to subtract out the oxygen mask. The reconstructed 3D face is also used as the prior knowledge for the imprinting stage, so it's crucial to have an accurate reconstruction. The official implementation is not robust to occlusions, so we apply data augmentation and retrain the model. Here are some results. As can be seen, our model is robust to the occlusions. For the imprinting module, it's a stack of residual blocks follow, following the classic encoder-decoder structure. For the occlusion, it already exists in the input face image. We don't have the ground truth for this part, so we use the Poisson blending and um, uh, to blend the real face texture with its corresponding 3D reconstruction result. Uh, to deal with the color deviation problem, we use the uh, structural similarity loss instead of the pixel-wise loss. We compare um, the, the loss functions are as follows. We compare our method uh, with others. 
and as can be seen, our method is more robust to different occlusions, and it performs well with large yaw angles, while others cannot perform very well on such images. Uh, we attribute uh, this to the 3D face prior generated by the 3D reconstruction module. Here are some more results. As can be seen, our method is more robust to different kinds of occlusions. We evaluate the reconstruction ability and the identity recovery ability. We synthesize 1000 sunglasses occluded face images using the test set and compare our method with others. Our method achieves the SOTA performance across uh, all the metrics. Uh, for the occlusions uh, spanning the face and the background, we can rigidly remove the part above the face without producing a smooth transition, creating an unrealistic scene where the face seems to hover above the occlusions. Uh, face the occlusion may risk of violating human privacy. To quantify this risk, we further conduct experiments to analyze the identity recovery ability across different types of occlusions. When combining the mask with sunglasses, the method can no longer recover the face identity. This observation proves that the method is controllable for privacy violation. Our main contributions are summarized as follows. We propose a novel face de-occlusion framework robust to arbitrary kinds of occlusions. We don't need occlusion-free training images, and we build a large occlusion data set that, uh, um, uh, with uh, extensively uh, manually labeled occlusions from real face images. Okay, this is my presentation. Thank you for your attention.